Hello. Hello everyone. Our deal number is 110 and our project name is the scavenger bot aka the cleaner bot. Basically there has been a lot of issue of cleanliness in India and the streets and all are not so clean. So we thought of making this uh, bot and also like it's in lieu with the Swachh Bharat Abhyan that has come up by our recent government. The condition that the street cleaners are faced with is very harsh. So in keeping in with the automation of the world, we wanted to arm them with automated bots to clean the streets. So this project what we have done can be integrated with IoT that is Internet of Things in which there will be a swarm of such kind of robots and they will coordinate with, with each other and thus end up uh, cleaning a much bigger area. Once we finished the project we thought that this project with slight modification in the algorithm and the design we could use the same bot for plowing the fields and cleaning the tracks and many wider applications which can be clubbed with the same bot. Basically where a certain area has to be mapped it can be used. Now we will go depth in, into depth of the working of the bot. And now I will be explaining the general flow of our project. Uh, first we acquire the coordinates from the Google Maps BI. Then the selected area is shifted to a proper coordinate axis which we want. Then there is the encoder VI from which we get the continuous ticks. Then we can either use a magnetometer or gyroscope for the heading angle. Once these two components are acquired, the motors are driven according to it. Uh, there is an ultrasonic obstacle detection VI so that if there is a human or a tree there in the way, it avoids it and the, and the encoder values are not harmed due to it. And at the end, there is the garbage storage mechanism. Along with this, we will be explaining the mechanical model which we have used. Now I will be explaining you about the mechanical design of a scavenger bot. Basically we started with the solid box design and then we had acrylic cut according to our design specifications. So this was we used 5mm acrylic because it had specific rigidity and uh, it was our uh, leads were sufficed in this design. And then we used aluminium to basically strengthen the acrylic part. This acrylic gave us a template design for which aluminium can be used. And the second important part was the broom. Uh, we bought a broomstick and uh, we had a template designed on acrylic and then cutting bristles of the broomstick we designed a, a special broomstick for this purpose which touches the ground and scrapes all the dirt from the ground and pushes it into the collector and uh, we used omni wheels for this board because we tried using the normal wheels but that those were giving us a lot of drag because the length span of the uh, wheels were too much around uh, 50 centimeters and uh, so we use uh, omni wheels omni wheels basically won't give us the drag friction because they are rot capable of rotating in the uh, this no uh, normal direction to the motion of the bot the, the next part was avoiding obstacles for these we use three ultrasonic sensors the first one was in the front which basically senses whether there is an uh, obstacle in front and this rotates by the use of a servo motor which, uh, which is attached right here and uh, to avoid the obstacle perfectly, we have used two side ultrasonic supplementary sensors which are attached to the sides. Uh, these basically help us to contour along the obstacle and travel towards the origin. And uh, we have used truss mechanisms to strengthen the uh, design. Uh, we, are, we have used two trusses to, because this motion should be stopped. And one more truss there and this ultrasonic sensor is again mounted on the truss which gives us additional rigidity. Hmm. Now I will explain you the collection mechanism of the scavenger bot. Basically when this rotates it collects all the garbage and pushes it inside this, this collector tray. And uh, these two motors are used to basically pick up the collector tray towards uh, above this part. And uh, these two servo motors basically tilt the uh, collector tray in the angle so that this the back part of the back part of the collector tray automatically opens due to the gravity force. And then this uh, with the help of a servo mechanism, this opens so that it, all the garbage which is thrown down from the collector tray goes inside the collection box. And in this way, all the parts are open. Now I'll demonstrate you the collection mechanism. 
Now after this gets collected in the okay, the garbage gets collected in the collector tray. This uh, collector tray comes up and uh, the lower part opens. And now the, using the help of servo motors, this opens. Uh, so now we'll see the working of the Google Earth VI. The function of this VI is to take points from uh, Google Earth and put them onto LabVIEW and later onto MyRio. So this VI basically functions by using Google API and KML files to store the data in. So we'll run the VI. So as we run the VI, uh, Google Earth window opens up. So you can see that whenever I click somewhere on Google Earth, its latitudes and longitudes are getting updated over here. So we'll select four points for the bot to run between. So we'll select the first point, uh, the second point, the third point, and the fourth point. So these four points have been recorded and their data has been stored now. Uh, so uh, a video of the bot running um, between these four points uh, is shown later on in the video. Uh, also to communicate between uh, MyRio and LabVIEW when we are using uh, LabVIEW, uh, MyRio on the standalone mode, we can use the LabVIEW data files or Excel files. Now I'll be explaining you the path formation of algorithm. So now here we have taken four points which are 20, 10, 30, 20, 25, 30, 10, 25. So these coordinates are fed into the this VI and it rotates and moves the origin to the point as shown which I'll explain now. So these are the actual points we, which we have selected on the Google Maps. I have taken the random point just for explanation. Now these points are rotated and scaled to the origin as shown over here. So the points which, are, which we get after rotation and scaling are 0, 0, 14, 0, 17, 0 and 3,17 which is also, which can also be seen on this screen in this VI which is the rotated longitude X and rotated latitude Y. So now once we have got these coordinates we will split this split the lines uh, as left lines and right lines. So uh, any line which is which is left to this point is known as left line and the lines to its right are known as right lines. So I have named this as right slopes. So right slopes are BC and CD and left slopes are AD. Mm. So now we can see that the left and right slopes are divided which is also calculated in this VR. So these are the slopes of the right lines and these are the slopes of the left line. So this is the slope of the uh, right line that is BC and then CD and this is the slope of the line AD. So uh, now I'll explain you how the bot moves. So the bot starts from 0, 0, and it goes towards this direction, goes in this direction. As soon as it reaches this point, it takes a left turn by the angle of slope. Once this is done, it, it is parallel to this line. Then it moves in front for some distance. At reaching this point, it takes another left turn, which is of slope. 180 minus the slope of this line. So once it reaches this, it is as it is aligned parallel to this line. Then it moves in front and reaches this point. And here it takes again. Here it takes two right turns again. One which aligns this in parallel to the line AD and then in parallel to line AB. So now we will give you the light demonstration of the path formation we have. My friend will move the encoder with his hand and also the magnetometer with his hand. So uh, now the values over here are given what originally are and this is the counter to travel that is the encoder has to move and this is the value of the encoder. So as I move this changes. So as the bot moves in front, we will see that this value increases. As soon as it crosses this value, uh, it will go into a turn, turning sequence. So I am increasing this value. And as soon as it crosses it, 892 does want into a turning. So now it will make a turn of 338 plus 
So now it will move in straight for some distance that is 4000 around 4000 so now it has gone into a second left turn and it will make this turn by an angle of 180 minus 71 plus the heading which was earlier stored in element 5 so now we move the magnetometer again now you can see that it has successfully completed two turns so that so bot has traveled from this point made a turn so that is parallel to line bc then moved in front then again taken a left turn so that it is again anti parallel to the line ab now it will move in front for another new counter to travel which you can see on the screen so as soon as it reaches this point the current y2 is increased it calculates its new current y location so now the counter to travel is 9531 so now we have gone from here to here then taken two left turns and got straight over here and take two right turns now it will again go this and this way it will keep traveling this way and as soon as it crosses this point its slope towards the right will change so slope right will be changed to value of cd then it will again go keep going straight and as soon as its new current y crosses the point 17 the code will stop and the bot will come to a halt Now that you have seen that there are two uh, obstacle sensors on the left and right of the bot and one obstacle sensor in the front, I will be explaining to you all the mechanism of obstacle avoidance. Imagine that the bot is travelling towards the obstacle in this direction and the origin is over here. So first, when the obstacle is detected on the front panning sensor, the bot will stop and will take a turn towards the origin. So here it will take a left 90 degrees turn and save the encoder value E1. It will reset the encoder and now the right obstacle sensor will detect the obstacle. So it will keep going straight until and unless the right obstacle sensor does not detect the obstacle and it will stop. It will save this encoder value E2. Now it will take a right 90 degrees turn and reset the encoder again. It will go straight until the right obstacle detecting sensor does not detect the obstacle and uh, reset the encoder save the value e3 now it will take a right turn and go straight uh, it will go straight till e2 is reached on the encoder counter and so when it reaches this point b it will take a left 90 degrees turn add e1 and e3 and continue with the in the path Now I'll be showing you the obstacle detection mechanism of our bot. As you can see that this is the ultrasonic sensor that's mounted on the servo and the servo keeps rotating. Um, so when it rotates we have made this map. This map is uh, basically the distance that is in front of the obstacle sensor and we have curta curtailed that distance to 20 cm for now. So uh, when the servo will rotate this map will be made. So like you can see the map is made right now and uh, for now there is nothing in 20 cm range of our uh, ob obstacle sensor. Now I will put my hand in front of it and as you can see that the hand is detected.